This is going to be a new stand-up paddleboard. The reason why I'm using this foam and not custom ordering some denser foam is this stuff is 1.5 pounds per cubic foot, uh, which is roughly what you want for a stand-up paddleboard because it's so voluminous. Is that even a word? Anyways, the volume is so high on a stand-up paddleboard that if you get something that's like two pounds or higher per cubic foot, this EPS foam becomes very, makes the board really heavy, which I learned on another board that I made previously. So I'm hoping I might have to beef up the glassing schedule on this, make the deck just a little bit more resistant to, you know, heel dings and stuff, and uh, that should be okay. I'm going to make this a very fast build. I'm probably going to do it more vlog style. I'm going to glue together a couple sheets of this EPS foam because uh, I wasn't able to get it in the thickness I need. They actually sell this in 3 inch. This is 2 inch. Unfortunately, I couldn't get stock on 3 inch. There just seems to be a run on building supplies this year. And thank you to a viewer. I can't remember your name, but you suggested using paint to glue sheets of foam together. Here's a test piece that I used some flat latex paint, house paint, and it's very solid. So that's what I'm gonna use to glue these sheets together instead of using polyurethane foam that I have been using in other videos. Let's do it. And I got this EPS foam at my local Home Depot. Gotta peel this vapor barrier off. So I pretty much got the rough blank all finished up, squared off, level. You can see here on the bottom, there's still some print from the foam because I left it mostly flat so I could square up the blank really well before then blending that in with the rest of the, I guess, rocker. So I'm just ensuring that this is level because I leveled the deck first, then flipped it around after having it level. And then now I'm gonna finish it off, trace the outline out, and start shaping. The boards I mentioned I'm going to go for are 8 feet by 32 inches and 4 and a half inches thick, although it might be a little thicker than that. I also have a video on how to make your own templates, you can check that out. It's on my channel. So I use latex paint to hold the pieces together and it seems to be nice and solid. Like
I'm super impressed with using the latex glue method to laminate these sheets of foam together because it the, it's holding really well, but also when you're shaping, Gorilla Glue, typically if you use that to laminate the sheets together, Gorilla Glue dries harder and it leaves a little ridge when you're shaping. So it shapes a little bit slower than the foam. So you end up with little ridges and you got to work away at that a little bit more. But this, this is just, it shapes just as easily as the foam. Big thumbs up on that. Okay, so I sketched out the rail bands. I did a percentage on the midpoint from the bottom up. I did 60% tail here. I did 50 at the nose. I did 70%. So from the bottom, I just took a measurement, did a percentage and then made a mark, drew my band, connected it on the deck. At the midpoint, I did one and a half and three for my first band and then my second band. At the tail here, I did one point one and a quarter and two nose i did one and i believe one and a quarter and two and then connected them all so what i'll do is remove this first rail band and then remove the second rail band pretty simple check out my other videos on how to do that i'm just going to get to it power seems to be out unfortunately i got my lights uh on battery so instead of using my power planer to remove the band i'm going to do it by hand So I've done the rail bands, I've already shaped the tuck. I went with a 3 8 tuck, hard edge at around 2 feet, 24 inches from the tail. And now I'm just going to screen all of those rough edges uh, from, the, from the rail bands. Smooth everything in, blend together, glass it. Well, I suppose I've got to install the fin boxes and all the plugs and everything I want to put in this. <laughs>
carbon fiber tape for the bottom that'll act in lieu of a stringer. Plus it'll look cool. This is a roll of stand-up paddleboard six ounce e-glass. What did I buy? I bought 30 yards of it. Greenlight Surf Supply. Use my affiliate link down below if you're interested in getting some good surf supplies and service. All right, going to open this up, roll it out, cut it, cut all the way around glass. Very easy, sort of easy, maybe easy. Other thing is I hate working with fiberglass. It makes you itchy. Make sure you wear a respirator of some sort because you don't want to be breathing in the glass. Glassing schedule is six ounce on the bottom with a six ounce tail patch around the fins. And I'm doing this board three laps. So it's pretty hot out, it's like 30 degrees, but it's in the evening now and the temperature's starting to drop. So always glass as the temperatures drop because uh, you're less likely to run into issues. No bubbles, the glass won't like bubble up and make sure to open up your vents.
gotta work fast, it's starting to gel up. Just made it. Look how jelly that is now.
Well, the eight foot surf suck is finished. I built this board in less than three weeks in my spare time, bit of a rush on it so I could have it ready to enjoy for the rest of this uh, surf season. So let me summarize this board. It's an eight foot by 32 by four and seven eighths of an inch thick uh, surf suck, weighing in at a very decent 22 pounds. So I'm very stoked and very happy about that. I built it specifically so it would be good for someone learning how to sup surf, which is me. The fin setup is a Futures 2 plus 1, so that's kind of my go-to that I really like personally. I put three vent plugs in it um, for insurance and also two leash plugs because, well, two leash plugs are better than one in my opinion, especially on a board this big. In hindsight, I kind of wish I would have thinned out the rails on this a bit more and made it a bit more narrow because it's like 32 inches wide. So it's pretty wide. Uh, I probably should have made it more like 30 inches. I was learning how to sup surf with an inflatable um, stand up paddle board that is only 29 inches wide. And I was doing pretty well on that. So I had already started this board, so I didn't want to modify it halfway. I thought the learning curve would be a lot steeper, but I guess I have a bit of experience surfing, so that helps me a bit. But you know what? That just means I need to make a smaller surf suck, you know, in the future. So a few firsts on this board is I use 1.5 pounds per cubic foot EPS foam laminated together with just ordinary latex paint. It works so good and it was way easier than using polyurethane glue and it was a lot cheaper as well. So that's like sweet. I did make the mistake on a previous sup by using uh, like a much denser EPS foam and that board was so heavy for the size of it. Use 1.5 pounds when you're making uh, stand up paddle boards. Okay, so the epoxy that I used for the gloss coat was uh, this stuff here. Greenlight uh, Surf Supplies very own brand of epoxy that they make now and this stuff this stuff worked flawlessly I did a whole other video on my thoughts about this uh, resin so you can go check that out on my channel as well I'll put the link in the description below and I actually just uh, finished filming that video like right in this very spot so if it looks the same well it's because I just finished filming that video so for fun, I like to list out how much my boards cost to make. So to give you guys an idea how much a board like this uh, costs to make compared to buying it from the store. So let me haul out my phone. All right, foam, $100. Epoxy, $120. Leash plugs, $15. Vent plugs, $20. Sup handle, $15. Fiberglass, $120. Carbon fiber tape, $30. Paint for gluing the foam, $5. Sandpaper, $10. Masking tape, $6. Brushes, $15. Sealer, $5. And the yellow paint, $10. Coming in for a grand total of $471 Canadian, or at today's current price anyway, the Canadian dollar is doing better, uh, $375 US versus buying a board like this uh just some rough estimates about fourteen hundred dollars us or seventeen hundred dollars canadian so yeah pretty big difference now that's of course not counting my labor which in terms of time it took me about 44 hours or so from start to finish 
So yeah, the lastly, uh, the last thing to do is to apply some EVA grip that I purchased off of AliExpress. So this stuff here, it's got a sticky back. So that'll make for a nice cushy uh, ride. Very grippy as well. This stuff is great and it wasn't that expensive. So I hope you guys enjoyed this build video. Um, my next build video should be very interesting and I've already got a start on it. In fact, the foam is like right back here for it. So yeah, like, subscribe, hit that bell icon and I will see you guys in the next video. And I haven't had this out for a surf yet. So right here, I'm going to insert footage of me hopefully surfing this board. Bye for now. The stand-up paddleboard surfs awesome, super stable, but it could have been foiled an inch thinner, including the rails could have less volume and the board shortened about six inches. Well, I guess I gotta make another board. Also, follow me on Instagram. I'm currently posting to my stories on another surfing sup build.